Do not attempt any of these mine explorations. Mines are unstable and can be very dangerous. This video is for educational purposes only and we do not assume any responsibility of injury. Therefore, we will not provide the location of these mines. Just sit back and enjoy. Hello everyone and welcome to Brother B Videos as we explore the mines of Las Flores Canyon. We have spent the last several months researching and documenting these mines. And now, for the first time on video, you will get a glimpse of what they look like from the inside. Today, we'll be exploring 10 different mines. So without further delay, let's get started. This is known as the Buckley Mine. Total distance, 20 feet. This is an unexploratory mine. And the main goal of an exploratory mine is to dig out as little as possible to see if the mine has the potential of delivering precious minerals, especially gold or silver. If not, the mine is abandoned and miners will simply dig a hole somewhere else. Tunnel number nine, total distance 49 feet. We've seen a lot of interesting things in these mines, and this mine was no exception. And what drew our attention was actually this plastic container. Now you may be wondering what could be so interesting about a soup container, but actually inside was um, a note written by Hugh Blanchard back in 2006, along with his buddies Dale Quick and Roger Brown. And it was through their research that we were able to locate these mines um, and we also learned what the names of these mines were because we had no idea and so really it's thanks to all their hard work that we're able to bring this video to you today if you would like to learn more about those explorers I'll add more information in the description below and if you would like to see these mines completely unedited you may click on the link on the bottom of the video Tunnel number 9, Annex. Total distance, 114 feet. There wasn't much of anything in this mine, at least nothing that was interesting, uh, except for a dead mouse, but it was really disgusting and it made the mine smell really horrible. So we'll just move on to the next mine. Tunnel number seven, total distance 255 feet. Now at the beginning of the video, if you notice, there was a, a buried uh, wheelbarrow at the entrance of the mine, which may have been left by the, the miners that were exploring these mines back in the you know, early 1900s. Uh, once we made it inside, we noticed there were signs of several cave-ins now these cavens occurred after the mining operations had ended. If a cave had happened while they were mining, they would simply clear out all the debris and continue working. So this is evident that cavens occurred after they had left. Uh, there is a, a fork or a split in this mine. And on the left side, right about there, is where a, a friendly little mouse lives. Uh, this was the most difficult uh, mine to reach since it required a lot of bushwhacking and climbing to get to it. But uh, you know, it had a wheelbarrow, so that was a pretty interesting find. The McNally Mine. Total distance, 315 feet. Now one of my... Um, YouTube viewers had asked me if I could film and and uh, upload video of all the mines that I could find in Las Flores Canyon. So I was given this challenge and I wanted to be able to accomplish it. So I started doing research and I found this mine called McNally Mine and it seemed really interesting and it had a lot of history to it. But uh, I couldn't find it. <laughs> it took us uh, five months and finally my buddy 
Bobcat was able to, to locate it. So it was a very interesting uh, find when we find it. Get to film it. Uh, it took us the longest to find and it also turned out to be the last, the tenth mine that we needed to find for um, for the completion of this video. So it was a very happy day. Now it was also the most dangerous mine I had ever entered because the opening, as you can see, uh, becomes increasingly small due to all the sand and rocks and other debris that filled in during landslides and, of course, flash floods. So, to be completely honest, at this point I'm I'm really stuck. I, I can barely move. So we'll just um, skip on to the next part. Now, this furry thing, I have no idea what it is. It, it looks like some kind of furry creature, but I didn't even want to touch it. So if anybody knows what it is or um, thinks they know what it is, or even how I got inside this mine, you know, let me know. I'm curious to see what you come up with. Now a little history about this mine. Um, it is named after Andrew McNally, who was a great Chicago map publisher and friends with Professor Thaddeus Lowe. And, uh, on September 24th, 1892, he renamed Oak Mountain to Mount Low on all his maps. So that's why we all now call it Mount Low, because of him. Uh, he co-founded Rand McNally along with uh, William Rand in 1856. And his company is still in existence today, and they still make maps, and now they even do GPS tracking devices. Now these timbers hold up this section of the mine where a cave-in had occurred. And uh, pretty much right after that, the ground becomes really muddy. And I'm assuming it's due to all these uh, water pipes. Here's a picture of Hugh Blanchard and Betty Velik at the end of the mine. And here's a picture of me on that same spot. For as long as I live, I'll never come back to this mine ever again. It's just way too dangerous, but we were very happy to have found it. Finally! It's a, a really, a really cool mine. The Twadell Mine. Total distance, 416 feet. Uh, this was another dangerous mine, similar to McNally, where and we had to crawl in for about 20 feet and you know, the entrance is very narrow. Now, once we enter a mine like this, it's not very easy to get back out. Because, you know, first off, we we can't turn around. There's no space for it. And we're going head in, so if there is an animal or a monster or something, there's little to protect us. So we pretty much made a firm decision once we got to this point that we're going to go all the way in. Uh, after about 20 feet, we were able to stand up, and uh, the mine gets pretty high at one point. There's, it goes up to at least yeah. um, right, maybe like 15 feet. Now, this mine is named after uh, William Twaddell. He was an illustrious gold miner from back in the 1890s. Uh, he owned and operated several claims throughout this canyon, and the various materials he extracted were uh, gold, silver, quartz, and iron. And even one of his old ore carts can still be found inside, along with several cans of beer and soda. And also this um, really cool newt was in there too. Pretty cool. That looks so cool, dude. <laughs> Tunnel number eight. Total distance, 455 feet. Well, at least we think it's 455 feet. Um, as you can see, though, this water tunnel has a, a lock gate at its entrance. And since we don't have a key, we were unable to enter this mine and, and measure its length. However, through some research, we found that it most likely was about 455 feet. But if anybody knows anybody that has a key, you know, let me know and... I'll put a link on this on this uh, video so I can show everyone how how it looks inside.
the Golden Star Mine. Yep. Total distance, 462 feet. Yeah. This mine contains about a foot of water throughout the entrance. And there's even a salamander that lives in here. In fact, it jumped out on us while we were walking through it. So it, it definitely woke us up. Now these timbers have been placed in several locations throughout the mine to prevent cave-ins. The giant pipes uh, were used for ventilating the miners as they worked deep inside the mine. And the rails that transported the ore carts are still found inside. We were walking right on top of them. Now, at the end of the mine, it seems that um, either there was a cave-in or it was purposefully uh, sealed to prevent anybody from going in further. So this mine may have even been um, longer than 462 feet. This is known as tunnel number six. Total distance, 468 feet. This mine required a little bit of a crawl, but once we were inside, we were able to stand up and walk until we reached a square opening. <laughs> and notice all the mouse droppings? Yeah, lots of rodents in this one. There is a fork in this mine as well, or a split, and uh, they extend quite a bit. Inside there were a lot of writing on the ceiling. Uh, most likely made by the fire from these candles. When this mine gets flooded, uh, you can see how high the water enters. So this mine is definitely a, a dangerous place to be during a flash flood. And last but not least, tunnel number four. Total distance, 837 feet. There's about a foot and a half of water at the entrance of the mine, and it's like that for about 20 feet. This mine also has a split or a fork um, in the mine, and it runs in two directions. There are droplets of water that fall from the ceiling, and this contributes to the collection of water. And this mine is also inhabited by several creatures, yet it's still a very popular and the most well-known mine in Las Flores Canyon. Here's a picture of Hugh from 2005, and here's a picture of me standing in the same spot where he once stood. And this brings us to the end of the mine. Well, thank you for joining me on this adventure. And I'd also like to thank my crew of explorers who stuck with me since the beginning and who without them, this would not have been possible. We encountered a variety of creatures that inhabit this forest, including some deadly ones like these rattlesnakes. And check out these bobcats that were fighting in a tree. See? That was awesome. But Las Flores Canyon has a lot more to offer, like a wonderful hike up the San Mero Trail, which leads up to the Echo Mountain House Hotel ruins. If you come here on January 1st, you'll get an amazing view of the stealth bomber that flies over the Rose Parade. And it'll even fly over your head and on its way back to its base. If you come on the 4th of July, the volunteer rangers organize a hike up Echo Mountain, and they'll talk about the history of Mount Lowe. Afterwards, you'll enjoy a great view of the fireworks below. And on the first week of December, they'll even organize a drive up to Inspiration Point, and the views are spectacular. Las Flores Canyon is an enchanting place, so let's do our best to preserve this forest so all future generations can enjoy it. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you again for watching, and until next time, see ya!